Hello, budding biologists, and welcome to another exciting episode of General Biology Honors. Today's episode is all about Hershey and Chase and how they confirmed DNA was the transformative agent. Martha Chase is on your left, Alfred Hershey is on your right, and they were two American scientists that worked especially with viruses. That was their specialty. Uh, so what are we going to learn about today? Well, we're going to review Avery's experiment. Then I'm going to tell you what Hershey and Chase were trying to find out. Then I'm going to tell you how bacteria phages, which are actually viruses, how viruses reproduce inside bacteria. I'm going to explain to you how the experiment worked and what they found out. So here's Oswald Avery. You remember that? And he and his partners, McLeod and McCart McCarty, uh, determined that DNA was the trans transformative agent by taking one macromolecule at a time out from the bacteria until transformation did not occur. Uh, this removal of DNA prevented the transformation, so that told them that it must be the actual agent because when it wasn't there, transformation didn't happen. When it was there, it did happen. So that said, hey, DNA is the transformative agent. And of course, if you remember, just for a little review, they used enzymes to figure all this out, which was pretty cool. They took them out with enzymes. Not totally enzymes, some chemical operations, but a lot of enzymes. But not everybody was convinced that DNA was the agent. They, they thought that it was too simple and that proteins had to be the deal. So Hershey and Chase developed a different experiment to see if it was proteins or DNA. The year was 1952 and they used these guys, T2 bacteriophage, which sounds like kind of a sci-fi character. They used E. coli, they used radioactive sulfur and radioactive phosphorus. So let's talk about a bacteriophage. It's a virus, there's lots of different kinds of virus, but this is a virus that only attacks bacteria. And it goes through several steps to reproduce itself called the lytic cycle. And basically what happens is they're gonna inject some genetic material, which we don't know what it is at this point. We know now it's DNA, but we didn't know then. So here's all these bacteriophages on the bacteria, and they're all injecting some sort of genetic material into the bacteria. And what happens is, is the viral uh, genetic material mixes with the bacterial genetic material. And once that happens, it starts to make proteins that are specific to the viruses. So they start to make the viral coat, coating of uh, the virus, which is kind of wild, right? It starts to make itself, it uses the bacteria to make more viruses, which I think is awesome. Anyway, once they're made, it even makes more enzymes. The bacteria makes enzymes that are designed to put the virus together. And so you might get hundreds of thousands of these viruses inside the cell until it just explodes, releasing all these viruses and they go out and infect another bunch of bacteria. Okay, so uh, they knew that, that the virus only had protein and only had DNA, and all the purple and red on here is protein, but they didn't know which part went into the cell, and so that's what Hershey and Chase were trying to figure out, and they, they knew some chemical things about these molecules. They knew that proteins had sulfur but didn't have phosphorus, and they knew that DNA had phosphorus but didn't have sulfur, so they used this information to design a pretty cool experiment. And what they did is they, they found radioactive isotopes of phosphorus, P32 to be specific, and radioactive isotopes of sulfur, S35. And they knew that they could use those as markers to trace where the protein and where the DNA went, which is really awesome. And so what they did is um, they, they actually let a bacteria culture start to grow. And this bacteria was specifically E. coli, Escheria coli, which is like Streptococcus' genus name. Escheria is this genus name. So different genus of bacteria than we've looked at before. But everybody's heard of E. coli. Anyway, once it reproduced itself, then they put the virus, they, they split it into two groups. And one group they put radioactive phosphorus. And one group they put radioactive sulfur. And they put them in there, and then they let it inject in there. And this blender, once it got infected, they put it in the blender and spun it around so that the protein coats would fly off of the bacteria. Okay, so they were loose. Then they put it in a centrifuge, which spins even faster, and it puts the light part, which is the protein coat and the liquid, at the top, and it puts the cells and whatever's inside them at the bottom. So they spin this thing super fast, like 5,000 repetitions a minute or something. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, they put it together, and uh, 
When they did, they, they looked and they found that the DNA was in the heavy part, which we call the pellet. And they looked and they found the protein part was in the supernatant, which is the liquid part. And I'll show you kind of right here. So as it spins, the supernatant floats to the top, the pellet sinks to the bottom. And then they looked to see chemically what was there. And they found that the DNA was in the pellet, which suggests that the DNA um, went into the cell. And so this was pretty solid evidence that DNA had to be the transformative agent, especially since the protein was on the outside, it never went into the cell. How could it be the transformative agent? So that was pretty definitive proof that it wasn't. Okay, so this really reinforced what Avery found out, really started the race for the structure of DNA. But before I finish, I wanna just review. So they had these two solutions, one had radioactive phosphorus, one had radioactive sulfur. They infected E. coli. They let them get in there and start to reproduce. And then they put them into a blender, spun them around, threw the protein coats off into the liquid, kept the cells intact. Then they put it into a centrifuge. It spun around and it showed that DNA sunk, which meant it went into the cell, which was definitive proof that it was the transformative agent. And Hershey and Chase basically settled the argument once and for all. So what did we discuss today? We talked about Avery's experiment. We talked about Hershey and Chase, who they were and what they were looking for. We talked about how the lytic cycle works, how bacteriophages work. I explained their experiment and their conclusion. I hope it was clear. If it wasn't, please let me know. Peace out, homies. Choke Barry.